Good evening everybody and uh, once again welcome back to the video this is lab number two where we are essentially gonna do a hands-on lab getting started with building GraphQL with AWS AppSync powered by custom Lambda with infrastructure code okay so what are we gonna do is basically uh, in the data source now we know that in AWS AppSync there are several data sources right I think based on what I have studied there are five data sources that AppSync supports and I remember three of them, I guess one is RDS, uh, we have open search and DynamoDB, but there are times where we wanna attach a custom Lambda function. So now this opens up a possibility, you can essentially literally connect to anything, right? MongoDB or whatever backend you wanna connect, your on-prem or existing RESTful API, you can convert all of them into a GraphQL API. So let me show you how that is done. This is rather a simple template which will help you as we progress down the course, okay? So sharing my screen. Uh, I'm not gonna go over the theory part, but rather I'll focus uh, on the lab. So if you know, if you don't know what GraphQL is, it's basically describing your data and I'll ask for only what you want. For example, in the JSON, let's say you have name, tagline, and contributor, but I'm only interested in the tagline, right? I don't need other fields, right? GraphQL basically says okay if you need that field i'll only give you that field right so that is what graphql is all about right so let's understand the lab this is lab number two uh, we have all the source code okay so don't worry about that so there are th uh, following files that are important env file lambda functions and schema.graphql and serverless.yml i'll go over that one by one what uh, each of them does so the first thing that i'm gonna do is uh, schema.graphql here I'm saying that I will be having a GraphQL uh, query so if you uh, again uh, just want to really quickly show you so run query again I would have a way to essentially query so I'll say get user right so I'm essentially defining that and I'm saying that it's gonna return you a message and here I'm defining the schema of message so for example I know that it will return following items, right? So I'm defining their data types here, right? Very simple, nothing um, difficult here, right? So I'm simply saying type, I'm using the word message and then I'm simply defining the data type, okay? Now, again, you can add as many, you know, get user, get ID, whatever you wanna add, you can keep adding, you can keep defining the schemas. You can also add mutation, right? In simple language, if I had to say, mutations are crud operation, okay? And, Again, this is a very layman language I'm explaining for beginners, right? Think of it as a CRUD operation, create, update, delete, okay? Now what I'm doing is uh, I have a Lambda function which will be fired whenever I fire get user. So whenever I run the GraphQL query, right? Get this one, this will fire the Lambda function, right? So here I'm def def returning a static data, but you can query MongoDB, you can query on-prem, whatever that business logic, you can add your business logic here, right? So let me let me simply add a comment here. All right, so this is where your business logic will go, right? Now, this might be a little tricky for beginners. I'm gonna show you the infrastructure code, please. Just hang on with me. <laughs> uh, again, any company you go, you will be asked to write infrastructure code. So you have to learn guys, okay? So here I'm saying .env is true. I'm defining my service. I'm defining my framework. I'm defining uh, tags and all the um, important parameters for my Lambda functions, such as memory, timeout, runtime, right? Over here, I'm defining a plugin called serverless app sync plugin. This is a plugin which will make it easy to deploy app sync. Okay. Here I'm defining my Lambda function. Very easy, right? Lambda handler. And here I'm saying that I have a Python file called Lambda function. If you observe uh, Lambda function and there I have a method called get user, right? It's very easy, right? So going back, get user. This is the complicated part. Again, it is easy, but just for beginners might be a bit of complicated, complicated right? Uh, is this section right here. So over here, and I'll go slow at this part, I'm defining app sync, I'm defining a name. So this is the name that gets generated over here, okay? Uh, schema is equal, I say schema.graphql. So I'm saying there's a file called schema.graphql. And here basically I've defined my schema, okay? 
Authentication, I'm saying the API key. So there are following ways. You can also use Cognito or Lambda authorizer, but I'm simply using API key for, for the project. So here is where the data source, and as I said, there are five data source that AppSync supports, uh, um, you know, that is, I know two of them on the top of my head, that is Elasticsearch and DynamoDB, right? Here I'm using a custom Lambda, which means I can literally connect to any data source and then put, you know, return the data, right? So my Lambda is like a wrapper. Think of it like a wrapper, okay? So here I'm saying, uh, I'm giving it a name. I'm giving a name, a name to the uh, data source. So if you click here, I uh, just want to show you through the UI so you guys don't confuse. So here, this name, uh, again, this is coming from an environment variable, right? I give a small description, config. Here I'm forming the Lambda ARN. Uh, this means that the value shall be injected or replaced at this placeholder, right? Uh, and that's pretty much it, right? So now if I go back to my console, oops, sorry about that. Okay, so now if I come here and I can say serverless deploy and again this will deploy my entire stack on um, the cloud right so let's wait I strongly encourage guys if you really want to be good at this uh, download the labs and try out okay that's the way you will learn okay again this is just a suggestion from my side right so now what's happening again meanwhile uh, We'll just pull up paint. So what we did is basically, uh, you know, the user will basically write the GraphQL queries, right? Uh, what that will do is that will essentially hit the data source that is essentially the Lambda. Uh, we can hit any database here, right? Now uh, we'll return the data and of course the user gets the data, right? That That's basically what we are trying to do. So literally you can convert any backend into a GraphQL uh, queries, right? So you can, either use HTTP endpoints or you can essentially attach uh, Lambda as a data source, right? So again, the stack is deployed. So I just wanna show you how it works. Uh, again, I have talked in my first part, so I can click on the orange button. Uh, let's remove all of that and I can click on plus icon and I can select the field that I'm interested, click on the orange button and sure enough, I have my data here. Uh, for example, if you wanna rename, if let's say on the front end, this is called capital T, uh, you know, you can easily do that here. You can see that's the beauty about GraphQL, right? Oh, you don't need these two fields. Okay, don't 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 query the fields. So GraphQL is basically get the data that you really want, right? I encourage you guys to come here, read about uh, you know what GraphQL is, right? So come and read a little bit about here, right? But literally now I can start adding mutation as well. This is a very simple lab where I'm essentially showing you all the infrastructure code and the lambda as a data source right so i hope you guys have enjoyed uh, watching these tutorials and uh, this all code is there in the lab section too if you wish that you wanna uh, how do we query this uh, in python right i have a, a code that i did in the lab one and this code was taken from stack overflow all you need to do is basically you need to provide your query here either a mutation or a regular query and um, just um, execute uh, the method that I have is GraphQL operation, right? And this will return you the JSON data, right? So if you are uh, looking on how would you query this data in Python or using Boto3 or request module, uh, the lab one has the code. So I would say, please do check that out, right? Uh, yeah, it's literally that easy. Um, Actually, you know what, I'll, I'll really fast show you, show you. So I'll go to settings and here I'm gonna copy the API URL. So I'm gonna copy the API URL and then I need the API key. So I'll copy the API key here and I'll show you, you know, it will work fine. So let me remove the white space. Now, all I need to do is I'll copy my uh, GraphQL query. I'll try to go here. Come here, let's say I need all the fields. Okay, so it works here. Now I'll simply pass that on the Python side. Okay, I'm gonna pass it here. A little bit indentation here inside. Again, I'm passing a string. So, you know, now all I gotta do uh, is just simply run the function and uh, I will uh, get the data. So, again, this is coming from the Lambda function. Okay, so I have showed you a complete end to end demo as well. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed these amazing hands on practical labs. 
in the next uh, part we are going to do something even more interesting so we are going to actually create mutation and we're going to query mongodb atlas and we're going to make a very amazing graphql backend so all of that is in the next video that is lab three thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in lab number three and if you have any more question list your question in the comments and i'll try my best to help you out okay thank you so much